Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Meeple Land by Blue Orange Games. And this game plays two to four players, takes roughly about an hour to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Meeple Land, you are trying to complete to complete the most prestigious amusement park possible. You and up to four players are going to attempt to gather locations, place them down onto your park, additionally gathering stalls and customers and new locations to add to your park that will give you more space, and go through four different rounds trying to attract customers, getting them into their locations to score points. After the end of the fourth round, if you can gather the most points, you are the winner. But of course, be aware of other players attempting to do the same thing, making false pathways on your park and leaving customers outside. When you gather the most, we'll find out in the game Meeple Land. First, I'll explain the setup, then how to play, and finally my review. To begin set up for the game Meeple Land, the first thing you're going to do is give every single player a grid, which is going to be their park. You're also going to give them a token, which will be considered their entrance to begin with for their park. Then go ahead and shuffle and place down the three different tile types, the large, medium, and small attractions. They're going to be face down, and face down for the large and medium are going to be this little structure here, and for the one that is with uh, the small ones, it's going to have these meeples on top with a currency. Then for the large ones, deal out three face up, the medium ones will be five, and the small ones will be five as well. Then go ahead and put all the additional meeple colors, there's yellow, there's pink, there's blue and green, and put them within reach of all players. Go ahead and place out the main game board, which is going to start at round one. So place the marker on one, which is going to have the $15 symbol above it. Shuffle up the uh, different types of vans and place them face down next to that board. And then deal out one plus the number of players of vans. So when you're playing a four player game, deal out five vans. Then place the corresponding meeples onto each of those individual vans. Place all the coins and currency to the side, as well as additional starting locations and extra spaces that you can add to your park. Deal out an extra coin, then two, then three, for the second, third, and fourth players, and give every single player 15 coins to begin the game. After you've done that, you're ready to begin the game. To start the game of Meeple Land, you're going to simply choose a first player. That first player, in my opinion, should be the last person to visit an amusement park. After that, you're going to begin the game. And how you begin the game is you're going to have each player take one action. And there are three actions that you can take. You can buy a tile, any of the tiles available here, the extra park add-ons, and of course the extra park entrance, which you can only get one per player. Uh, you can also go ahead and advertise. To advertise, you're going to take the corresponding top small tile and you're going to pay the cost and get the meeple associated with it and place it either in your park or in a van next to your park. The last thing that you can do is you can choose to pass. If you pass, your turn and round is over and you're going to keep all your currency and all your people and everything situated and wait for all the rest of the players to finish. And when you pass, it's typically because you have no more money or you have no wish to actually play any additional park spaces. After each player passes, then you're going to go on to the cleanup round. The player who first passed is going to receive one of these five buses. They'll take that bus and then they're going to put it next to the entrance of their park along with all the meeples that are associated with that bus. And that will happen for each of the four players. Then you're going to go ahead and welcome visitors. You're going to place any of the visitors you can from your buses onto your building spaces. Now, each of your spaces is going to be based on the attractions that you have, and there's going to be different types of meeples on them. And if you have green meeples, you can put green meeples on there. If you have red or yellow, pink, you can put pink, and white, yellow, you can put yellow. And additionally, there's special spaces as well. If you follow the criteria for the special spaces, you can place those additional meeples, which will grant you additional points at the uh, end of this round here. It'll give you extra money as well as points. Then you're going to receive revenue. Based on the number of employees, or not employees, I should say, characters on your park spaces, you're gonna score one dollar. And for each of the special spaces, you'll get an extra dollar. So if you have toilets associated with one of these locations here, you're going to be able to put a blue guy here, which is gonna give you one dollar for the blue, plus one dollar for the toilet attachment, as long as you have that meeple there. After you've gathered revenue, you're going to determine a first player. The first player is the person who has the least amount of money at the end of the round. Give that player this little token, and they're going to be the ones who start the next round. 
After that, you're going to take all the buses that uh, you have emptied on the board here and put out new buses until you get equal to the number of players plus one. From there, you'll move to the next space of the board, grant everybody the bonus of currency, which will be 10 and then five and then zero for the fourth round, and then once again, begin again. Each player is going to have the option to buy a tile or they're going to be able to buy one of these guys up here, which is gonna be their uh, different mm, people they can get. And of course, uh, finally, they can choose to pass and it'll keep going on like that for up to four rounds. At the end of the fourth round, you're then going to score points. You'll get one point for every blue and green meeple associated on your board. You'll get two points for every yellow and pink one. You're going to get points associated for each of the different types of attractions that you're gonna have because when you mark an attraction down on your little board here, it's going to be based on which ones you have on your board and based on how many of the different types. So if you have nine different types of attractions, you're going to get 10 points. And of course, you're then going to score negative points. For every meeple that is outside of your bar park or in your entrance area or in one of your buses, it's not on your board, you're gonna lose points. Minus two for the good ones, minus one for the regular ones. And finally, you get minus two points for each of the park pathways that you do not connect with specific um, location uh, with specific uh, pathways. So in this case here, you, as you can see, this is going to connect. However, if maybe one of them uh, does not connect and hits a tile off, then it's going to give you minus two points. And in general, the rules for placement are you have to at least have one of your tiles connecting um, to one of your roads. So like this is going to give you that specific road that connects the tile, but because this tile is also gonna have a road that connects off of the board, you're going to get minus two points for this space here. And after you've done that, you'll tally up all your points and whoever has the most is the winner of the game Meeple Land. Will you be able to build the best park and have the most locations and of course the most people on those attractions? Find out in the game down below, link in the description. Meeple Land is a tile placement puzzle game at its core. Your objective is to build the best grid you possibly can with the attractions that are available to you. You're always going to be able to purchase one of these tiles here and place it on your board provided that you have the money to do so. And to get money, you're going to need attractions to start with and then people on those attractions. Getting the better attractions with the best customization, meaning if a restaurant needs to be associated with one of the park spaces, that is something you need to do in order to place certain meeples down, then you should to try and do it. Avoid getting those negative points like not having the meeples you need on the right spaces. The buses that you're going to be taking are going to have certain meeples that you may not want, but you might want them based on the other meeples that it does have. You're going to try and have to regulate the cost versus value for each of the decisions that you choose to make. Sometimes it's better to end around with extra money and not get certain pieces in order for hopes of other unique pieces to come up later. Additionally, there's going to be specific spaces that are going to net you bonus uh, wild areas. Like for instance, this space here is going to net you one wild piece of your choice or one wild unit. It can also be a great connector, but it's going to be a high cost. This is a four, which means it's going to run you quite a bit of money. Whereas you can get a larger one, which has extra meeples for five, which is great. Or even for instance, three here, uh, the more different roads and pathways typically means the more money it's going to require as well as the larger ones are going to have a certain cost associated with them based on uh, how many different pathways they have. It doesn't always mean that you're gonna have to spend more for larger ones because larger ones have their own costs to them as well. Having a larger area, uh, take a larger space taken up on your board will usually amount to less meeples being able to be placed on it and more roads potentially leading to nowhere, ending you with negative victory points. Now you can have negative, uh, or you can have roads going to nowhere as long as they don't attach to another one of your tiles. So if they lead offside your board, that's not going to be a problem. These extra spaces that go off and down, that's fine. But if they connect to a space that is associated with your park, that is going to net you negative points because that is what you're trying to do is get the meeples to go from one location to the next location. Location. This game kind of reminds me of, I guess, Roller Coaster Tycoon or those different ty type of tycoon builders where you're trying to build your own park. You're trying to get uh, characters associated with the park and place them in there. And of course, you want to advertise to make sure you get unique, specific characters that you want. Sometimes you won't get the characters that you want and you're going to need to improvise by getting spaces that include wilds or you're going to need to add uh, bathrooms and different stalls attached to your locations to net you more points. Uh, like I said, the puzzle game, basically placing by place, by place, by place, pass, switch with switch, everybody goes, and then you push to the next round after gathering the buses and placing them on. Up until the point where the very end of the game triggers, and you start to realize there's a little bit more to it. You're going to also have to be getting 
all the unique different variants of the spaces or all the different locations of variants of the park spaces. So I might want the wheelie whirl and I might want the merry-go-round. I might want the water slide and the water fume and they need to be placed correctly as well as associated with basically a resource type management or a meeple type management system in the game. Leaving your characters off of the board is going to cost you greatly and you want to avoid that if you possibly can. And the way you do that is by choosing the correct pieces based on the players. Now, this game in general is kind of like a solid solo game you're not actually working against or with the other players you want to score more points than them but the main way that you can mess with them over is to take a piece that they want which can happen inadvertently or on purpose and it's really based on if you're watching their boards or not it's kind of a relaxing straightforward game that is based on just collecting pieces and creating the best most pretty park you possibly can my wife loves this game she loves puzzle games and if you are a puzzle lover as well you're going to dig meeple land i'm terrible at puzzle games i always lose at puzzle games so every time I jump into a puzzle game, I expect to lose, and then I do. Maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it's always given me kind of like a, I don't know if I really want to play a puzzle game because it's going to be real challenging for me. My brain just doesn't work as well as some people's does. But with this one, I did have a lot of fun. I enjoyed placing down the puzzle pieces and the park pieces to try and create my own amusement park, which I was a huge fan of Roller Coaster Tycoon, and this one gives a little bit of a flair to that game, kind of reminds me of how I build my parks and where I want them and different types of visitors. It does it very well, very straightforward, and it's very easy. In four rounds, the game is going to take an hour or less, and because of that, I really, really dug this game. It's beautiful, it's colorful, it's vivid. The different pieces are great. All the meeples turn out wonderful. All the park spaces and artwork is excellent as well. And of course, the theme and flow of the game works. Having the buses come to your amusement park as you're building it, more buses means more people, more people usually means you have more attractions, and it just feels good to do so. Adding in little extra bonus bonuses and benefits like extra land you can add to the park or if you mess up and close off your entrance you can add an extra entrance. That is so smart as well. Meeple Land is a solid puzzle game with a nice meeple resource management system that I think most of you puzzlers out there will enjoy especially those of you who enjoyed those old tycoon style games of building your own thing and feeling good about it at the end of the game. This game a solid recommendation recommendation from me. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Meeple Land by Blue Orange Games. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and of course hit that bell notification button. Like I said, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this game. Every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we play games just like this one on our live stream so you can watch us play it and determine if it's something for you. And that's pretty much it. The website's got some new stuff and some more reviews and whatnot. If you want to go ahead and check that out, you can. I'll be showing you guys some new games coming out shortly and our game is scheduled to be finishing or not finishing but like a starting artwork commences commensuration pretty soon here as well anyway guys thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to creating a meeple land with you next time